I want to take a moment to talk to you about Roll TV, our online video library platform. Whether you've been training for a week, a month, a year or five years, you already know that you need all the tools that you can possibly get and get your hands on to continue improving your skills as you go through the Jiu-Jitsu journey. And that's what Roll TV has been designed for. We started this project about a year and a half ago, and from the very beginning, we focus on continuous updates and continuous uploads of techniques that are useful to you. Anything from self-defense to sport jiu-jitsu, anything from individual drills and techniques to the full concepts and lessons from big players like Sophia McDormand, Christian Woodman C., and Andres Bronowskis. In addition to all this, we feature workshops, seminars, and events that took place at Roll Academy. So you have access to all of this at your fingertips. And recently, due to a large amount of requests, we have opened the opportunity for lifetime memberships. No more cancellation fees, no more reoccurring um, payments, no more subscriptions. One simple payment and you have full unlimited access to drills, techniques, full concept lessons, and events from big names in Jiu-Jitsu. How can you beat that? Go to RollAcademy.tv, create a free account, take a look what the platform has to offer, and subscribe to continue improving your jiu-jitsu. And now, let's get back to Roll Radio. Marcio Cruz said very early on in his jiu-jitsu journey, he would become world champion, and there was no one he couldn't beat. He wasn't being arrogant or cocky. He believed that with his raw talent, unrivaled dedication, and a die-on-the-mat attitude, he could make all his goals a reality. It was that dedication and mindset that led Marcio to not only become a Brazilian national champion, Pan American champion, and world champion, but also to receive his black belt all within four short years. Listen as Marcio hilariously describes his incredible journey, coaching philosophy, and what he believes it takes to be a black belt. Here is Roll Radio with the hilarious, at times controversial, brutally honest, and always outspoken Marcio Cruz. Welcome to Raw Radio. And we are live. Gary, how are you? I'm good. How are you? This is going to be an interesting conversation. Yeah, I think so. Today we have Marcio Cruz in the house. Sir, welcome. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. So I, I, I'm really interested to hear your story. And as you know, we I have a lot of stories. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, a lot of stories. <laughs> that's good. I promise. I promise. Right. <laughs> Let's sit back. We don't have to listen to Gary anymore. We just no. listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But listen, your story is unique. It's very interesting because um, you started your journey early on and then you, you achieved your black belt quite fast and that's one of the things that i want to kind of bring it up and simply because there was not a lot of attention today yeah no i yeah i have an explanation for that yeah because i have an explanation for that because you see that all the time people talk about this oh this guy got his black belt in three years and a half this guy got a black belt this and that that by today uh if, if you get a black belt doesn't mean nothing you know because Okay, I can I can get a guy today. I train him for six months and give him a black belt. Doesn't mean he's a real black belt, and doesn't mean he's achieved something uh, important on that timeline. I want I would share my my uh, timeline jiu jitsu competing, not a training. Okay, yeah. uh -huh. I start I start training probably I don't remember the dates uh, exactly, but probably October in 1996. Okay, I never see jiu-jitsu before that. Actually, I saw it with my friend, but I didn't train. Uh, and then I started training. And uh, 97, I, I was a state champion. I think I have eight months of jiu-jitsu. And then after that, they had a tournament they call uh, National of uh, States. That's mean each state uh, send you a... Uh, um, best 
competitor that beat the, the one uh, states to go for, that was my first trip to competing. That's for in Brasilia, uh, they kept off Brazil. And then I, I was a champion. Uh, that wasn't a big tournament back in the day, but I had a less than a year. And then I started believing like, oh, I, I think I'm good on that, you know? And then in 98, then I started competing very well. And then I, what, I got a third place on the world because the, the politics of uh, big names on the corner, it was still having this by today, imagine 22 years ago, I was by myself, a poor kid from nowhere. And uh, on, the, on the corner was a, a Carson Gracie, uh, Liborio, all those guys. And, and the guy who was re refereeing was from Carson Grace. That, 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 that fight is on YouTube today. If you guys see the fight, you guys are going to see what I'm talking about. Well, and then, uh, and then uh, uh, after that, uh, something changed in my mind. I said, like, okay, I, I, I don't have just to be good and beat guys. I have to beat guys and referees and the system. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's what my, my, my uh, head in this time. And that's training. And then I, in the 78, 90, uh, 98, I won my first big tournament. That was a national in, in, in 98. And I submit everybody. That was my change, changing my mindset. So like, I don't have to just be a guy by point and defend because they still can fight against this. But if they submit, they got tap, no referee can save them. So what, did, what, what changed between, with, with your approach, with your competition? You, what changed your, between the before and, and then? The mindset. I, 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 would, I would say the mindset is 80% of uh, competition because you can definitely be good. But you go in the tournament, you see guys getting beat up really bad for a guy who's the same level. It's just a mindset. It's just like how, how bad you want to be a champion. You know? How, how, and, and also take a risk. If you don't fight to, I say all, all the time, I say my student, like if you scare about you losing, you, you don't have a chance to win, you have a last chance. You got to have to get off this. Uh, thought about, oh, I cannot lose. No, no, no. You have to win. If you lose, nothing change. If you win, something may change. So, so how... Go ahead again. Yeah, I just want to know, so in this relatively short time frame, how often are you training? So that's what the, the other thing is. I started training with 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I knew I was behind everybody. Right, right, yeah. I knew it. So I, I said, I got to train more than everybody. I'm not just training times, but I was the first one to get in on the mat and the last one to leave. And then my, my, my professor, uh, Luis Enrique Cabellino, he's a big referee uh, today. But uh, back in the day, he, he got all the guys and put against me. One go in, another go out. And I, I train, just stop training when... Any and everybody cannot go anymore, like tired, but yeah. I keep going. And then he always, we had a, a, a thing that uh, we have a deal. I will never say no for a train when he asked me. Mm -hmm. He said, like, you will go on more. Even I'm dying, I say yes. Yeah. Was this and, because you had certain goals or was it just the way he trained? Yeah, because I, because I decided since day one, why better will be a world champion or live about jiu-jitsu. Nice. I didn't have that time to, oh, when do you click that? No, no, that, they want, they want to say like, that's my life. My mom said like, you crazy. I quit school. My mom said, you crazy. You cannot do that. So like, mom, that's my life. I will do that. I will teach you shit somewhere. I will taught in Brazil, but uh, I get far from that. And then in, in 98, I was a really good. I was super meeting everybody. I wasn't, I was a guy who came to change the game. Because on the tournament, you see guys winning by advantage. I came to change the game. And this, I was a blue belt, okay? And I have a funny story that uh, back in the day, we have two magazines only that uh, uh, you could, like, be uh, famous, let's say. But Gracie Mag, uh, Grace Magazine and uh, Tatami. That's mm -hmm. the only two ways. And also at the politics over there. You know, you guys know how it works. Mm -hmm. And then uh, most of the time, 
you just be part of the the magazine if you friend of the guys that work or you know or somebody ask it to you but i i didn't know about that back in the day I was like 18 19 years old kid i didn't deal with that back in the day i thought if i win i'll be in the magazine that's the only thing i thought but uh i started winning on the on the on the nationals i win to be meeting everybody said like okay it's not everybody that submit all the fights i didn't it's just my name on the list of champions i say okay our next year i'll be better and then but then i i, I noticed something that uh uh the magazine start to, uh posting things about uh blue belts and i was the best blue belt i say okay i wait a little bit and then when i go to uh, uh purple belt and the purple belt i was beating everybody i i and then after 98 98 i uh i came to us for the first time to compete in pan ams in 99 that was in miami mm -hmm. there's another mm -hmm. there's another funny story i st i did my first fight 10 30 a.m and did my last fight 3 30 p.m oh wow. 3 30 a.m 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 the next day yeah no no same day it's one day tournament right yeah yeah you start overnight. like yeah. right overnight because That's what because, yeah. because back morning. in the day they didn't have uh uh the number of the competitors before they open up uh the registration saturday mm -hmm. oh friday for the tournament saturday so they could not measure and they, the the number of competitors go crazy and they keep doing and they try to uh get another day from the venue but they said no no that's, that's so how it. many people how many people did you have in your bracket how many matches i have like 11 mats whoa because <laughs> no but because i wait wait in absolute it's a true division mm, i always right. fight two divisions yeah, yeah, yeah. and then uh but I, I didn't fight there all day long i, I fight wait because the, back in the day I was too confused the tournament they mm -hmm. didn't have the experience they have now you know and they keep and that was the the longest tournament ever after that they learned a lot and they start like planning better and then i came back i came back uh to brazil and then i got promoted to the purple and i was i was purple just for from probably february to july <laughs> today is not possible anymore because they have a minimal uh timing for belt but then i just i just had an opportunity to fight two tournaments on the, that uh time uh, that's window between that time there was the states and the words then i win both submitting everybody and then that that they said now i go to the, the magazine because i i i i i didn't uh fight like seven minutes the whole tournament because uh again i i came in uh to the politics and they didn't allow me to fight absolute because they have another guy's friend of friends and then uh, i gotta prove myself before they put allowed me to go absolute and then i got out the, the 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 brown belt and then uh on the war on the on the national of this uh year 99 i fought a brown belt and then uh th that was another change game for me because i fought a, i fought uh, my first fight was against uh, Ricardo Arona, and Ricardo Arona was the best brow belt that time, like easily. That was his f last tournament as brown belt. And then I fought him. Everybody thought he gonna destroy me because I'm like, oh, who's this kid? And then I started the fight. He tried pass my guard because pass everybody guard. He could not get anything, and then I swap him. And then I was winning and somebody from the, the, the coach saying, oh, hold, hold, hold. But I never hold. I always go to submit. I go, but the guy started like, no, that's Ricardo Arona. And then I was holding for a while. And then he uh, swept me in the last uh, 20 seconds. And he beat me. And then Carlos Gracie Jr., Carlinhos came to me and said like, look, tomorrow, I don't want to see you uh, fight for tournament. I want to see you fighting the way you train. I don't want to you care about points. I want you to submit everybody. And then I came back for absolute and submit everybody and uh, become a, a, a absolute champion.
So, so he won. So he won his division. Or your his, division. Uh, my division. And, That's and, what you, so, and you won and, the absolute. Uh, yes. Was but, he in the absolute division too? No, no, he didn't fight. He he was a that was his uh, his last tournament, and then he got his back belt and was that's it. But look, I don't think nobody in the planet got a uh, the Grand Slam uh, three different uh, tournament in the three different belts at the same year. I was Pan American champion as a blue belt, world champion as a purple belt, and national champion, Brazilian champion as brown belt. That's 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 what I'm talking about. Timing people like oh this this uh, this guy got a black belt, but he who he's beat, he he got a championship. And then one year I and then on on the brown belt I kill everybody after that. I submit all fights. <laughs> I submit I think like nine fights on the words, and then and uh, submit uh, and then be uh, world champion wage vision absolute. And then the, the 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 biggest thing was year after that on the national after I get my black belt, I become a world uh, uh, a national champion, wage division and absolute beating all big names, world champs and everything. Everybody had to be thinking who we is throw, that? We throw, we throw, we throw, we're talking about three three years in and then probably eleven months, yeah. become from a white belt to Brazilian national because the Brazilian national today look like easier, okay. But back in the day, Brazilian uh, national uh, and the world is all the same thing. All the course, competitors. It was the on, biggest tournament ever. It, it just had those two. They right. have not, nothing else. And then Pan, America, Pan American is a little bit easier because not everybody got money to travel or right. a visa to travel. That's what right. the, the Not biggest. everybody could come to U.S. And, yes. and before, yeah, yeah, before it started getting as big as it is today. Yeah, and now it's, it's, it's probably the same level. Well, everybody had to be thinking, like, who, who is this guy? Why, how is this possible that, one, he's going from belt to belt to belt, but more importantly, he's submitting everybody. He's winning all these divisions. And were people approaching you? And, like, what was the response from, from everybody else, from the other teams? And in, in, in then I have another funny story, too. I was in brown belt. Before I got my black belt, I lived in Sao Paulo with a, a high and grace for a while. And then that year in 2000, uh, uh, another, another guy uh, start, uh, started like showing up for the words, uh, for the word uh, as a fighter. And it's another guy that changed the game. Uh, that was Fernando Margarida. And then he came to fight, he fought a, uh on the on the words uh in 2000 that was a brown belt he's a black belt he lost but he he put impressive and then uh he fought on uh uh national and i beat him okay mm -hmm. but uh, before that i was in sao paulo with his friends and then he came to uh before the words uh fighting pan ams that was orlando if i'm not wrong in 2000 and then he submit fabio gorgel never Ooh. been submit ever and he submitted Fabio Gugel. Wow. And then that day I was in Sao Paulo with a couple of friends like Fabio Leopoldo, some guys from uh, Grace, uh, High and Grace, Grace Sao Paulo. And then uh, we didn't have internet that stuff like we, we have today. We, people talk like, oh, did you see it? Somebody called this and that. And you hear like that he submitted Fabio Gugel and we, everybody got impressive. And the same, the first thing came through my mind was like saying, I can beat this guy. Everybody looked to me like, what the fuck he's saying? <laughs> this kid is like, just got a brown belt. Yeah. He, because I didn't fight, uh, I just fought on the, on, the, on the national that day. That was like February, some, I don't remember like exactly the day, but it's, it's something like that. I, and everybody looked to me like, ah, what's this guy? Mm -hmm. And then eight months after that, I beat him. Yeah, did you? That's, that's what I'm talking about, like mindset. If you really want, if, but like, you just not just want, you have to work hard and believe. Yeah. I want to ask you, did you know, I mean, you knew who he had beaten, but had you seen him fight? Did you, yeah. were you familiar with him? So yeah. you, you had a little bit of knowledge behind it. Yeah. It yeah. Yeah. But he's, a, he's, a, he was the first one that changed the game. Yeah. Because before that, the fight was decided by one advantage, uh, one sweep. Everybody respected each other too much. 
everybody, this guy, he came to, to change the game. He proved, look, okay, he, even when he, uh, he, he, he didn't win anything, he, he put some statement there like, holy, this guy. But he started coming, and then in 2001, he, he was a world champion and uh, weight division absolute. But he uh, was a change game too. Hey, let's go back a little bit in time. How did it all this start? I mean, you, you, you start at 18 and 96, and you accelerate quite fast. You, you get through all these guys, and, and you tap them out, go through all these championships, and you achieve a lot. But how did it all start? Why did you start jiu-jitsu? Yeah, that's uh, – of course, uh, it, it is a, a talent uh, involved. I cannot say, like, no, I, I was a bad, and then I trained. No, no, it's a talent involved. But uh, – I remember it was like, uh, I was a, a, a really troubled kid when I was like uh, 16. And my mom uh, got tired of me doing like mistakes at home, sent me to my grandpa house to rest a little bit, to, <laughs> to take it easy. <laughs> and, then one, and, then, and then one of my friends started doing jujitsu and he said, oh, I do jujitsu. And he said like, what is that? There's like a ninja, something like this. Like, no. <laughs> And he started explaining to me, and this guy was very passionate for jiu-jitsu because he removed all the furniture from his uh, mommy's house, uh, the, the living room, and put like some uh, carpet in and started training people. He was white belt. He's a, he's a black belt today. He's a, he's a nice guy. And then uh, his name is Flavio Aleluia. He's uh, from uh, Brazil, uh, uh, 021 with you under Terencio. And then uh, I said, like, oh, that's good. But the first day that I roll, he put a gear, a, a, a old gear, dirty gear on me, and I roll him. And I, was, I would never had a class of Jiu Jitsu, but I, I knew how to move. I feel like, oh. But then I moved back to my uh, mommy's house, and I had no Jiu Jitsu there. And then I wait no, another two years when, it, when the Cabellino, my, my professor, uh, was start teaching in my community clothes i couldn't walk because i didn't have a car or anything and then i said i pay uh jiu-jitsu back in the day if you see the money today was like uh less than five dollars uh that's it i pay or, yeah, yeah. A, a month i uh. paid that probably like there's not back in the day the money is more uh, okay but anyway it wasn't that uh mm -hmm. big money and then i started training it's since day one i i I was to be meeting people. I don't know how. I didn't know what to do, but I, I was doing. And then uh, better than be good, I really like being on the mat. I feel comfortable on the mat. You know, that was uh, the thing that I make me moving forward. And then I said, I was kind of lost what to do in life. And when they see like some, some guys teaching you, it's like, I want to do that. But back in the day, it had no money involved. Right, you didn't have a guy who making money in jiu-jitsu. That was rich people having fun in jiu-jitsu. Mm. But I, I was poor already, so I couldn't keep in, being poor and happy. That was my, I was like 18. You don't think too much when 18. Was it difficult to find a jiu-jitsu place to train in Brazil back in 90s? Yeah, or was yeah. It in 96, let me tell you that, you don't see black belts everywhere. You see purple belts teaching, brown belts teaching, black belts just in big gyms. Mm. But uh, today you go to the internet, you see a lot of coral belts over there. That yeah. sounds yeah. weird to me. I was asking my friends, like uh, one guy that I asked, I asked Gordo, because Gordo is, is old. Gordo already black belt like a couple of years when they start training. And he like, he's like, Pat, I don't know what this guy coming from. Now it's a lot, a lot, uh, Coral belts over there that we don't know where it came from. I don't. Wow. I don't know. Jiu-Jitsu has grown. Yeah, yeah. No, it's but look, big. but the time is not the stretching time for you be a, for you <laughs> <laughs> for you be a coral belt today. You you have to get your black belt in eighty something. Oh well, yeah. You yeah. cannot. You know cannot. You know. And then and another uh, 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 thing is some guys that I know that for my school. They already stopped training when they start. Now it's a red and uh, coral belt. That's not right. You have to be uh, like training, teaching, 
in jiu-jitsu to deserve a quarrel about. I know the politics involve a lot, you know. I know at BJJF trying to getting things together about this, but it's still like politics, a lot of politics involved. Do you think if you started jiu-jitsu today, from the very beginning today, it was like you, younger you today, would you, do you think that you would receive the black belt in the same amount of time or things are just different how the belts are rewarded today? I think it, it, if I could get in two years, probably, because now people give him belts away. You think it's so? It's uh, our? You why, do, why, do you think, why do you think it's so easy to get a belt? Because, like, you know, America uh, is all about money and nothing wrong with that, right? You have to... Uh, America's too smart. They get us something that no, got, nobody making money and find a way to make money on that. And let's talk about the NFL. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Just here is bigger than all the sports the, all over the, the world. So they get it. So back in the day, the, the Americans, they get a karate from Japan and find a way to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But what they do wasn't right, wasn't a karate. They find another thing. They make kids breaking broken wood to believe themselves. Mm -hmm. They're making uh, kids that never get a punch in the face or never punch a face believe they are black belts. And they, re they, they check that uh, people just want to wear a black belt. They don't want to be a black belt. Do you think that that's where jiu-jitsu is going? Do you think that in 10 no, it's not. It's, it's not going. It's not going because uh, the tournament show who is good and who is bad. Doesn't matter on which age. Before, you fought like, oh, I cannot fight anymore. Now I'm a master. Now, now with 70, you still can prove yourself mm -hmm. in the tournament. And then uh, so, uh, I, uh, some big school trying to ch change this way. Because uh, the other thing that uh, Americans like it, and that's good, they, gotta, they, they, they like to play. They got a plan in everything. Some guys with 20 something's planning when he's 80, he's gonna have a damn amount of money, dead, saving. That's great. But for Jiu Jitsu, it's really hard to me tells you on the first day how long you're gonna take to get a black belt for many reasons. Mm -hmm. You can get hurt, you cannot train much, you cannot have great talent, you need more time, you cannot have, have a good phys uh, physical athleticism yeah. or something yeah. i can't measure that but some schools using that as a, a, a sales thing oh if you come in here twice a week and you get the dots on the court and you get your four years to get a black belt that's wrong that's completely wrong you're selling something that's not real you know black belt you don't have you not uh have a black belt you are a black belt if you stop training for a year, I don't believe you're a black belt anymore. That's my opinion. Because you have some, to be active. Oh, uh, 100% of the time. Do you I, have to train hard all the time or in your No, eyes? you have to train, have to train, have to, 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 to. Don't take me wrong. I'm not saying you have to be a world champion. You have, you have to be better than you are today. Tomorrow you get improved uh, inch, one thing a day, but you gotta moving forward. Learning more, learning more, learning more. Mm -hmm. People like, I, I know a guy who was a competing crazy and, and then he training hard and he got his black belt, he's quit. He just want to be a black belt. And I have bad news to him. He's not a black belt. He was a black belt. I think and that happens often today, especially, especially even in the lower belts. People yeah, achieve sure. a blue belt or a purple yeah. belt and they yeah. quit. They don't see but, you. The moment you tie the belt and the next day they are gone. But that's that's is uh, the the professor fault. Okay, you don't or explain do you... how it works. You know, it doesn't matter. I was uh, with uh, my friend at school, and he was a bunch of uh, black belts on the wall that he promote. He's older than me, and I say like, "Hey, that's nice." But how how many of those guys quit? Oh, a lot. So that's I don't want it to me. Yeah, if, I think if, if if my black belt quit, that's my fault. It's my responsibility. I didn't tell him what jiu jitsu is. Yeah, I think it goes back to the mindset, though. Like yeah. you were talking earlier, because it's people are thinking, 
uh, I don't want to just be better than I was yesterday. They're thinking I want my, Peace. I want my purple belt. That's, and that's as far as they can see, right. Instead of, you know, the purple belt will come when it comes. I just want to keep getting better. You know, I'm going to share one thing with you guys. I have my school here open since 2009. That will be 11 years now in December. I still not having one black belt from white to black. I probably going to have my first one now. End of the year, 11 years. And this guy never stopped training. He never, but I want to, uh, I want to like get from him everything that I can. You know what I mean? And then like, I have a rule in my school. If you're my student and you almost, you, you ready to get your next belt. Right. And then I said like, tomorrow I'm going to promote this guy. And you come to me and say like, Hey professor, when are you going to promote me? That's six months later. I'm going to promote you. Mm -hmm. That's a fee. If you're asking me about belt, Is at least six months. If you ask so again, delay, if you ask, it delays you every time. Yeah, I, I, that, you don't. You can be respectful. You can be anything. And then that the rule works perfect here. I never have one guy asking me about belt. So it, this is something that you tell them. It's not just something that uh, now oh, it's like culture. The students tell them. I don't have to tell uh, them yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. now it's a culture. That's like here a little kid school, thing. So you know, we no, do that with the kids. There's no entitlement. There, there was no expectation that this. No, 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 no. I mean, no. at this date here, I attended. Yeah, the, not of that. And that's my that's my uh, uh, way to see if you're right or not. It's not you. It's not anybody. It's me. I so decide. She, you sometimes a guy train every day, going good in tournament, but he's not acting as a black belt. So share with us. So, so we know what they think. Share with us, what do you look for to promote And somebody to a next belt? So that's what I'm looking for. Commitment, that's the first thing. If you really want to be a black belt, at least you have a, like a, 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 a decent jiu-jitsu. That's not the most important thing. You don't need to be great, but at least you, have, you need to be like how you defend yourself. That's a, 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 but no, it's not a big deal. And then you have to... Uh, act as a black belt let me explain to you if you go to the street my opinion if you're a black belt you have a target in your back everything that you do wrong will reflect in jiu-jitsu that's my opinion because you have opportunity to be a better person through jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu as a tool change your life if you didn't get that i don't think i have guys i have a guys here that left before because uh, I, when they left, it's like, thank you, God, I have to do with that. Because mm -hmm. I know I will never promote this guy. I want to be honest to him, but it's, 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 I think I'm going to hurt his feeling if I tell him, my friend, leave because you'll never get. I just let him feel that way. You know, because you got to act as a good person, good human yeah. being. That was going to be my question. What does, that's, a, that's, what does a black belt act like? Yeah, off, that's, off, that's, off, a that's a first thing. You, your jujitsu cannot be that great. You can have, let's say, uh, I have some students that uh, have a limitation, okay? Mm -hmm. Bad knee, bad back, uh, cannot train every day, like uh, advanced age, some. I don't want to be a, but I want to he's being good. If you're a good person already, you are halfway to get a black belt from me. You know, I see that. I might see that every day during, during four, four, five years, seven years. I know if you're good or not. I know if you're changing. If I see you doing bad stuff, that is going to put you on the, on the end of the line for sure. Hmm. And I'm not looking for, I get a lot of black belts. I, I, I look for the fish like, oh my God, just those guys, but the real guys. You know? I was about to say, it sounds like you're looking for quality, yes. not how many. Yeah. Right. You see the, 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 the successful schools, people measure for numbers of students, right? Mm -hmm. How much money you make. And my school will have a different thought because if you, have, if you really want more students, give you blue belts for everybody, you're going to have a lot of students. Uh, uh, pay attention, white belt, that's what most schools do. My school is different. I have a start to the teach on the fundamentals class for white belts, new white belts, and I teach a defensive class. And I give more attention for my current students. 
the guys that I know will not leave. The new guys have to prove me they deserve to be in my school. I don't, I don't, I don't come to them. Oh, I leave them over there. They come in here. They got to prove to me they deserve to be on my mat, you know? And then you go in my class, it's like uh, three black belts, five brown belts, and three white belts. Because some guys will be good for fundamentals. But when they come to the real jiu-jitsu, it's not everybody. Uh, I think the Grace Barra got the slogan say like, jiu-jitsu for everyone. Mm -hmm. That's the hope. That's what I wish. But the only thing that I sh I'm sure about jiu-jitsu is jiu-jitsu is not for everyone. Jiu-jitsu for special people who can handle mentally defeat. Who can, who can mentally hold uh, 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 injury? Because jiu-jitsu is the only sport that you have results every day. It's not like bas basketball. You don't play basketball every day and see if you win or lose. You don't boxing. You do shadow box. You do pads. You do bag. You do sparring once a week, twice a week. Jiu-jitsu, even on the fundamentals class, you see if the guy passes on guard. You see if you tap. And that's hard to handle in your mindset. Not for white belt, even for me, even for you guys. You go to the school and the guy beat you up. You, how you go home? Happy? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Yeah. You get mad. Even if the guy's good, you want to do better. And that's the thing. Some guys just quit because cannot handle their, 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 their feelings. You know? That's you why Jiu Jitsu makes special, you know? Make people uh, stronger. Do you, think jiu do you think Jiu Jitsu is hard? Yes. Difficult? Oh my God. Some, some people could say Jiu Jitsu is for everybody, right? So you know, it has you to know, be easy. You know, yeah, that's a lie. Uh, you know how many students in, in those 10 years passed on my school? How many? Probably like 3,000. You know how many stays? How many less stayed? Than, le less than 100. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the new student, because they will quit. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about my, my real students. Mm -hmm. Look at that number. That's yeah. make like very special people can do. I mean, talking about real jiu-jitsu. So why do you think people quit? Because they cannot handle mentally. You go home crying because you jiu-jitsu like that. In the, first, in the first three months, everything is new. First army bar is amazing. First passing guard is amazing. And after that, a new guy come and pass your guard and you feel like a shit and you want to mm -hmm. quit. Yeah. And then you start dealing with uh, uh, the biggest uh, uh, opponent for jiu-jitsu is a couch, TV, and beer. Mm -hmm. The guy at home, <laughs> yeah, the guy at home with a beer and TV. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. asked himself, I should go train. I should do a Thursday night football. You know, yeah. the question is Thursday night football. Because yeah. it's, it's the better. The answer. Yes. And then you and then you kind of you start asking, let me let me thinking about. It. I go watch football, having fun, drinking beer, stay with my family. Or I go jujitsu and the guy sit on my face, tie my neck, if it's smash. The, the answer is like, of course it is, but if you you are special, if you deal with your emotion good, you definitely will be trained and that's motivating you every day. But that's for special people. It's not for, I wish Jiu Jitsu is for everyone. The world will be way better. But let me tell you that, I guarantee it's just for special, special people. So it sounds like, it sounds like it's not that Jiu Jitsu is hard, is that people don't want to take that challenge and they, they don't want to go over these obstacles. They but don't want, but they don't want to be- When they say hard, it's not hard physically. Physically right. is easy. It's mentally. Mentally. Mental is really hard because every day you know if you're good or feel bad. And that's, I think it's very important uh, the, the professor explain that for the student. Look, that's a hard journey. Will be a bad, bad, bad situations. But if you go to the end, you're going to be very special. You're going to be like a, a half percent. And a half percent of anything is good, you know? Mm -hmm. You well, I think that that's why um, 
That's why so many blue belts leave, I think, is because yeah. they're like, oh, my God, I am good at this, right? Because I just got my blue belt. I must be good. And then the, a white belt comes along and sweeps them, right? Chokes them out or whatever. And they're like, oh, what did I, I just wasted all this time. You know, I'm not going to go back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something with you guys. When they, I do too much with uh, cancellation on my school, like everybody, okay? And then... Uh, I, le I learned all those years, I learned how to uh, read uh, the brain, you know? I know when they say something and think different. Oh, yeah. I'm going to share that with you. The guy come to me and say like, oh, my schedule changed, this and that, I have to quit. And I, I, I on, uh, on his uh, brain, I see like, Oh, I'm a little pussy. I cannot handle that. And in my, in my essay, like, stop that bullshit. Go home. You're a little pussy. Go. But I don't do it. I just think and I go like, okay. Actually, I stopped dealing with the cancellation because I, I make me feel uh, weak when I feel guys like that. Well, I like think I said, you don't have to do it. That's what I say people. Like, oh, that is hard. That's, that's your decision. I don't decide to you. I don't tell you, you have to go. I asking you, you want to go? You want to enjoy the journey? It will be hard, but it will be good. If you don't go, if you don't want it, don't do it. It's fine. And that's what I'm saying. Nothing wrong to quit for guys that are willing to quit, you know? So quitting, if somebody's honest about it and says, hey, yeah. you know what? This just isn't for me. Quitting You're okay for, with it. Quitting for me is bad. I don't deal with quitting anything. I feel, I feel anything in the, in the game. Quitting games like holy, uh, I, I'm not dealing good with that, you know. <laughs> and that's a, I, 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 the other day, I, I think I, I'm, I, I pushed too hard my son to competing, because he's decided to compete. I, I, if you're asking me, I've been saying that for my friends the whole life. If you're asking me, uh, you want you, your son be a fighter? I say like, no, definitely no. I knew because it would be hard for me dealing with that. And being a, it has been a journey for us. We be uh, get up and down always. But the other day, he had a bad, bad day. He competing so bad. And I came to him like, why are you doing that? You are shame for me. Eh? Get hard on him like always. But he's, he's already getting stronger. And then after thinking about it, like, yeah, I think that time I, I crossed the line. I got to come talk to him and I got to think about one of my friends. Uh, he said like, man, you wrong. Your son is uh, on his age. He never drink, he never in trouble. He never this, he's doing Jiu Jitsu. And the most important, he never quit. He's been de dealing with a loss the whole time. He went to, but like sometimes the, the, the loss is hard. And this is the thing. And then I came to him. So I told him, I'm very, very proud of you because never once he came to me and think like about quitting. Mm -hmm. And I, I told him, like, I thought about quitting on blue belt. When I lost my first blue belt tournament, I get my gear thrown in the trash can mm -hmm. on, on Saturday night. But Sunday night, I get back and say, like, I got back to train. But I thought it was. My son, he never thought about it. He never came to me. And I look, let me tell you, I told him since day one, I said, like, look, on that journey, you have two doors, okay? Or you're going to be a champion or you're going to quit. You know, not, it's not between that. So, so, okay. No, no, that's not for us. We have two. You ready for this? He said, yes. And he's men. I get it hard on him since day one because I believe, uh, for be good, you gotta be somebody pressing you because the pressure is coming, you know. And then uh, I, I I suggested him a, a Netflix uh, series that uh, about the coaches. You know the name? I forget about it. Oh yeah, I know. I just saw it the other day. The 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 coaches who talk about how they build. Yeah, the teams, right. But and, I, I yeah. saw I saw all the all the I, I I didn't finish all because I didn't like the way the other coach because I like the way I I do. <laughs> and I saw the best. I, I saw the basketball one. Yeah, he's a hell of a coach, man. And then he teach me some very important. Then I teach my son. I told him to watch, but he didn't watch it. He said, "Look, 
the guy who go for the day that is important and feel pressure and, and the, it doesn't perform good, he doesn't know what it, he's doing. Because if you get on the point that uh, you get a pressure, it's because you're good. You should be happy to be there. It's not a pressure. It's the opposite. Of it. You're on the next level. That, that's, the, that's amazing. I learned a lot from this guy, man. He's a hell of a coach. Well, it's pretty clear that, I mean, you're, 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 you're driving for success. You're driving to win. Seems like quitting and losing is not even an option nah. in your head. You're going to die trying. That's what motivated me to keep you going. So I want to so I want to talk to you about some of the MMA fights that you had because that 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 is I have another funny story about it too. Oh, there you go. I can't let I go for it. Let's go. Let's go for the 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 most impressive fight that I made that everybody talking about today. But just for to to <laughs> it's a lot of funny stories. <laughs> I think you gotta do two two shows for people to understand. Uh, <laughs> when they when they started in jiu jitsu, oh, when they started MMA, that was 2005. No, uh, I'm sorry, it was 2004. Uh, I had a fight schedule with Don Server. That's why my my debut was scheduled for. That's your debut. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your first. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and and then oh, man, and then that was on the day of uh, wars. That was two weeks after the wars. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my uh, the guy called me. I want to fight, man. And I start training. I said, like, no way I can get ready for MMA and uh, jiu jitsu at the same time. Then I give up my two times world uh, absolute world champion to do my uh, uh, MMA debut. And that was true. My uh, my my second child, my daughter, uh, was scheduled to born uh, of the day of the the the, the fight. Mm -hmm. So we anticipate the the born for I can see it, you know, I can be there. And then after two days, I got on the plane and went to fight. That's fight. Uh, if I'm not wrong, was in South Carolina, something like that. But who who got that fight for me was uh, Charles uh, Charles Gracie. Yeah, I think. I'm not sure. I think the guy the guy that uh teaching in San Francisco. I think Charles, right? Not not that, sure. uh, the the Nick Diaz and uh, Nate Diaz. Uh, okay, okay. You know well, who? No, well, let's go to the fight. So, so you're flying yeah. out, and then, and then, I, and then we fly to San Francisco, spend like three, four days there, and then fly to South Carolina. I know this doesn't make sense. That 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 I knew now, but before I didn't understand about uh, USA. USA is for me is like you fly in USA, all of, everything's good, and then <laughs> and then we get there. And then uh, the first day, everything good. He trained a little bit. Second day, uh, next day we're gonna fly out to uh, South Carolina, and then uh, 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 when you get on the on the place that a guy supposed to drive us to airport was on the uh, uh, half half Gracie uh, school, and then the guy said like, "Oh man, I'm sorry." It's like. I didn't speak English this time. He said, like, and asking, God, God, what's going on? He's like, I don't know. And then the guy saw on the thing that the, the owner of the show get the money and run away with all the money, uh, the okay. tickets, oh, there, uh, and the fight was canceled. That was thing. my first. Uh, <laughs> that's your, your first I, experience with that. My first experience. I didn't get a penny from the fight. And then we, we didn't have a ticket to go back. We have to spend some day. We didn't have money too. We had spent some days with a uh, half in, in San Francisco. And then we uh, changed the flight and uh, another two days we went to Brazil. That's why my first, first experience. But the, the difference between me and others MMA fight, fighters is uh, uh, I always believe in myself too much. And then I have a... Uh, 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 my manager, I uh, said I was the only one fighter that never uh, say no for a fight. I always, Dev said, you want to fight this so guy? I said, yes. 
You always you're accepted not, a fight. Yeah, you're going to fight this guy? Yes, yes. And then that's, that, that wasn't too smart. I need somebody to. <laughs> <laughs> Let then, me ask uh, you. Can I ask you if that's, do you think that was just your mindset at the time that you were overconfident or were you? Yeah. Con- no, con- no. Uh, it's a confidence is important. Yeah. I think that's the key of uh, su- success in anything. I did too. If you don't believe yourself, nobody believe yourself. 100%. Yeah. And if then, you don't believe it in yourself, nobody's yeah. going to do it for you. I mean, and there's... then I got to like, uh, uh, because I didn't fight these years, I, I spent time training for nothing. I got to kind of like, uh, dismotivated. And then uh, I traveled for US for stay there training a little bit. And then uh, my the guy who was a manager this time, he called me and said, like, I got a, a UFC contract for you. Come back to Brazil and then let's train. Okay. And then I, I was about to come back and he called me, look, the guys invite you for the, the ultimate fighter. The one that Hachar Evans win. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They invite me. I said, like, no, I don't speak English. What are you going to do there? People are going to make fun of me. And I cannot <laughs> answer. I probably ended fighting with somebody with no reason. And then I said, like, but uh, why are you going to fight for a contract that I have already? Doesn't make sense. And then that was the second one, right? That didn't have much uh, popular here. And then I come back to Brazil training. And then I, I made my debut and have a funny story too on my debut in the UFC because uh, I don't know how it works today, but before you have to have an interview with a doctor to get approved for the fight. Sure. Yeah. So you got to tell like, how was your last fight? How was your last knockout? How was, and then he started asking me that question. So like, no, I don't have it. And then he, he, he asked for somebody, what the fuck is he doing here? This guy doesn't know, didn't have a fuck. He's an FC. And the guy, no, no, he's a huge hit fight. And the guy approved me like uh, he wasn't happy to approve me. <laughs> that was the commission. That's what Connecticut uh, commission. What was your first, what was your first fight? Uh, was uh, against the Japanese guy, uh, Kunehara. He had, he had a three fights. I had no fight. And what was your toughest fight? Yeah, that was my next question. Because uh, I would imagine, I mean, you said it yourself, you don't like losing. Quitting no, is not an option. No. I'm going to well, tell you, I never, I never talk about this because I never say anybody about, like, if I lose because of reason. The reason is my reason. I decide to step up is my thing. So I, I don't have to share with nobody. But that's what's pretty impressive. Uh, I actually, I need a guy who I believe more to, to tell me what to do or not to do. Because some decisions, uh, the fighter not should do it, you know? Like accepting fights, uh, fighting her, that's something that... I, the, the, tough, the toughest fight that I had was uh, against... Uh, and, and then my, my, my record as a fighter is a pretty impressive, even if it's, it's, uh, it's small. Because I never fought with an easy guy. I think the, the easiest one was the first one, and he was tough. He wasn't that. Uh, he's a jiu-jitsu fighter, this and that. And then uh, was against uh, Glover Teixeira. You know? Yeah. And then, Why was uh, it tough? Why, why yeah, was it tough? One, because that's the thing. I was uh, teaching here in the U.S. already. I didn't train MMA for, I think, two years. And then I stopped the fight, and I was training jiu-jitsu here, doing some uh, stand-up training here with some guys, this and that. And then uh, I went to Brazil to uh, do a camp over there. Mm-hmm. And so I get there, I was doing sparring training, and I was taking the guy down, and then he moved to the side, and I hit my head on the floor. And then I feel my back a little bit. And then I said, no, I can do it. And I keep doing it. When I was double leg somebody, my back stopped. I was on the floor. And then uh, I barely could uh, walk in for three weeks. I was taking cortisone shot every three days. I was doing crazy stuff. And then uh, actually, he, I didn't have a camp. But I promised for my students that I will be fighting. I, I left my school for four weeks. And then I, I get the responsibility to me. I said, no, I have to do it. 
I, I, I didn't train in nothing. I didn't turn out for three weeks. And then I said, like, let me try to do some spine training. And then in my mind, I said, like, if I put him down in the first round, I can submit him. Look how crazy I am. Mm -hmm. Glover Teixeira, one Teixeira. of the toughest yeah. fighters ever <laughs> step in the octagon. Well, that's, But that's, that's the way to think. If you don't believe yeah. yourself, nobody, nobody believed me in that fight. I didn't train one day. Did, I, did anybody tell you you're crazy? Hey, all the time. <laughs> all the time. But that's the thing. I went there. Yeah. I fought against him. He's a, he, today, we're talking about the guy who fought uh, two weeks ago in a hell of a fight. He's, he's been around he, for forever. He's a, no, but let me, say, let me tell you that. He's a, the, I think he, he's a, the, I, the most complete fighter. He can change punch with anyone. He can take it down anyone. He can defend take down for anyone. And his ground is amazing. He's this amazing fighter. And then uh, uh, I fought, a, I think, two, uh, two rounds against him. And I didn't give up. I was about to die on the tire on the, on the, on the cage. But at, at the end, uh, for a fighter, it wasn't good. It looks bad. But for me, it was amazing to do that. Because I didn't quit. Again, I didn't quit. And I do it again. If I have to make a decision, I do it again. I did it so many times. Because that's what I tell my, my fighters. If you quit once because you're afraid, you're going to quit forever. Because there's something that are, when you, you're about to fight and somebody asks you, you want to fight? Say, no, no, my knee. But inside you know your knee is not bad. That's going to be inside uh, of you for the rest of your life. Just excuse. Yeah. If you tell like, no, no, I'm not ready. I'm mentally broke. I'm scared. That's more honest. And I think that's the best way to do. So what do you tell your students or your fighters that, that, that tell you that, you know, I'm not ready to take this on. I'm not ready to do this. I, I, I don't want to do this tournament. I don't want to fight or whatever the case is. Yeah, and they and give you excuses. What do you tell them? I tell them like, you should not be here. You should find another thing to do. You know, if Simple he had a reason, if he had a reason to do, if you have a, a, a thing that I mess you up, let's say you, you, you like a divorce, you have something real that will make you mess. I'll be the one going to step up for you and tell like, you're not good. I can't quit for them. They cannot quit. I will quit. That's why you get it. You have, you need to have a, uh, how I say, uh, complicity and, uh, you got to trust on your coach because he'll never put in the bad situation. I, I remember uh, a couple of days, a couple months ago, uh, uh, the situation with uh, Robert Drysdale, Robert Drysdale in the UFC. Remember that? Mm -hmm. yeah. That uh, yeah. the, how's the name of the, 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 the guy was talking shit about, I don't know, I don't know his name. About he's Drysdale? A, yeah. yeah he's I don't a, remember either, but I know the story. Yeah. He's, a, he's a commenter at UFC. Yeah, yeah. And he was, oh, that's unbelievable. Oh, that's like, shut the fuck up. You don't never fight. You don't know shit about it. <laughs> Get out of here. Go do your thing. Talk shit on the microphone. What are you talking about? I mean, they're actually making him go more than, he wasn't hurt. He was, he was hurt. I'll do it. You know, but people are like, oh, if he doesn't want, they got to respect. No, respect shit. You, you sign the contract, you have to step up. Go, if you're my student, say, like, go there, get punched in the face and lay down. Get your, your thing, you sign for that. You don't sign for quit, be sitting on the, on, on, on the, on the little uh, thing to be like, oh, I'm scared. No, my student never fight again. But, but how, how a guy who a writer, uh, <laughs> and we're gonna talk shit about a, a, a Robert Drysdale inside the cage. What the fuck? Let let a, a, a Daniel Cormier talk. Let the guy who fight talk, and you just listen to. Oh, I'm tired of the, those bullshit. Don't hold, don't hold back. Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> <laughs> I always do. You don't need to ask. I always do. It's pretty clear that you have a lot of passion for fighting and martial arts jujitsu and yeah you know you you cannot be like uh, i i'm not here for making nobody happy you know people i know a lot of people hate me i don't care about it 
any who love is a is a fake love if you are until you say something that he doesn't like it i don't give a shit you know i always was like that i i have my opinion uh, wrong or right i'm here and i stick with i don't i don't change because i'm gonna make somebody happy unhappy i'm 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 100 honest you know i'm uh, I, right here if somebody say something that i don't like say like no nah, i don't agree you know? it's okay disagree i'm not does say i'm right or i'm wrong but at least i'm honest and honesty is good honesty is good for for some not for everybody you're right you know what you're right because some people don't want to hear the honest answer and i think that's something that you talked about earlier about cancellations and quitting and all that a lot of people need a reason to quit and once they find their reason it's done it, they are not coming back they, they, they will never do what they wanted to do because you, it's it makes sense here for them even though it might be fake you know what i say for those guys that uh come to me say something say like hey my friend let me tell you that you you never you never gonna do the way i do i fought it like i fought it like i i fought a jiu-jitsu with everybody i never say no for a fight i fought no gi with the best in the world. I fought MMA with the best. I fought, I fought a, a wrestling in Brazil with the national team. I beat the guy, number one, back in the day. I have two amateur fights and boxing. Don't come and give excuse that I don't know. I know every excuse. Don't, just be honest. Say like, I'm a little pussy and I cannot handle it. That's, <laughs> I, I respect you more. I respect you more if you do that. Because then I, I can fix you. Because they're like, okay, let's fix that. But if you come with the skills, you know, even like uh, know the problem. I always do a comparison for my students. Like you have a car that's not, it's not running. And then you put a brand new uh, engine. But the engine is not the problem. It's that it, it, the wheel is the problem. The car still not no, no, no running. You know what I mean? If you, if you have a problem over here and say it's your knee, I cannot fix it. You don't even like know the problem. Yeah. You're right. That's what yeah. I, I always say that. It's okay to be weak for a day, two week, uh, or a month. The question is, you want to be weak forever or you want to fix it? That's my, so, my, my, uh, my advice for this student. So and you, you got to be honest. Do you say that? Do you say, say, say. come, come here, we'll fix this. We'll get you yeah. over this. If they, you tell say... me the, if they tell me the truth, it's just okay. like, I, uh, professor, I mean, I'm having a problem. I'm, 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 I'm afraid. Say, it's fine. Let's fix that. Let's talk about it. Let's see. You know how you train in here? The same mat they train there? Go there and do the same. Have fun. Mm -hmm. We can, we can fix uh, uh, the guy with a weak uh, mentality. But if the guy say he's afraid, but he say his knee's bad, I cannot fix the knee and fix the No, I can't. I got to be honest. Mm -hmm. nice. It sounds like honesty is the approach. It's being honest up front and then we can fix situation. If you're lying to yourself, I mean, that's, that's a very different situation. Marcio, uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. I love. Let me share <laughs> the last one. I can't okay. stop laughing. <laughs> I got, I got shared. Uh, remember the <laughs> one that I told you I was in uh, uh, Sao Paulo saying I will be, uh, uh, Margarida and the guys that are looking to me like, what the like fuck you're crazy. saying? Yeah, yeah. That, ha that happened again in Las Vegas with the same guy. That guy was uh, Fabio Leopoldo. When was this? That was against uh, Frank Mir. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, the, 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 the odds was like, I think like uh, plus thousand for yeah. me, something like that. He, that he fight ended like, quick. And then uh, he... He bumped me over there. He came to watch my fight. And then he like, I'm going to test this guy now. Because he remembered that day that was saying. And then he said to me, he, he, he called me. He's my friend. He called me and said like, hey, how you feel? How this fight going to end? He said like, I'm going to destroy the guy, this guy. He like, okay. Because he thought like, he want to test me to see if we have the same confidence that I have back in the day. Because the situation almost the same. And when the fight finished, he came to me and said, like, oh, my God, you did it again. I can't believe you did that. I can't believe he said, he looked at me like, he had because, this, uh, I mean, the, Frank Me is a hell of a fighter. Oh, but he, yeah. was, he was a too cocky. 
He yeah. was too cocky. I was, I, I, they don't have this anymore, but before you have uh, the fight is talking a little bit before the, the fight. Do you remember that? Uh, on the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then the guy, I, I didn't speak English that back in this time. And the guy asked me, like, are you afraid of his uh, 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 ground, uh, his, uh, his jiu-jitsu? And the guy was uh, translating to me. It's like, hey, hey, don't, don't ask that. Don't ask that. That's not. <laughs> well, why? Because he's a world champion. And then uh, uh, Frank, and, and, and he got uh, some answers from Frank Mir for the fight to you answer on top of that. Mm -hmm. And then he asked me, oh, the Frank Mir said he got a, like uh, uh, more, a lot of more experience than you. He's stronger than you. He's better than you. He's, he's this, he's this, and this, and that. It's like, first of all, he had a 15 fights on that day or 14, something like that. It's like, I, I do 14 fights a day for a long time. He doesn't have more experience than me. And then he's like, oh, he's this. And that's like, we'll see on, on when you get it. And he was like, I think like 25 pounds more than me. He, but he, you guys know how the fight was. I went down, but, uh, and, and that's the, if you don't believe my friend, nobody believe people tell you believe, but they don't really believe in you and any fighter. If you're underdog, nobody believe you. You have to believe yourself. The confidence is the key. Yeah. And, and, and but only the confidence doesn't work. You have a train, you got to work your hard. <laughs> don't get well, me wrong. <laughs> no, absolutely. Hard work is necessary, but it all starts here, right? It all starts in your head. It's all start with the confidence, the drive, the goal and all that. And, and some of the things you talked about, you know, eliminating these excuses and really finding the true, true, honest approach to the training. Beautiful stories. I love this. I can't stop laughing. I mean, <laughs> your, your stories are just killing me. Listen, before we finish this, we have five questions for you. And we want you to kind of answer them quick. First thing that comes to your head, Gary is going to ask you a couple of questions, but uh, some of them are funny, some of them are not, but it's, it's mm -hmm. just a good, good, end, good way to end the, the show. Let's yeah. do it. All right, let's do it. What was it like the first time you stepped on the mat? The... Uh, wasn't any of uh, uh, in the mat, real mat, right? Because the first time was on the on the living room of my friend right, with some yeah, carpet. Yeah. No, Where, not that like, time. That was a uh, 1996, like around October, something like that. What did it feel like? What did it? Yeah, yeah. That that's how it was the best day of my life. It's something that clicked that time, you know, like some connection with the mat. I feel good being on the, on the floor. That's weird, but it is, it was that way. <laughs> It's true. All right. Uh, what was your most rewarding achievement? Uh, it doesn't have to be jujitsu. I think, I think my, my, the best thing that I, uh, achieved in my life was see my son, uh, be better than me as a person. That's yeah. a, yeah. that's huge. That's, that's my amazing. huge. He's yeah. a, he's a better person than me. I'm too crazy. I mean, sometimes say something that I'm supposed to say. No. I'm acting sometimes <laughs> that I'm not supposed to say. And no. he's a, he's a, he's a, like, he's the guy. I love yeah. this guy. That's and, he's, oh. hey, and he's tough as hell in jujitsu plus, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, all right. You touched on this a couple of times. Um, it sounded like you did when you were a blue belt but have you ever wanted to quit? It uh, wasn't uh, two times. Uh, that time that I lose a tournament, because that tournament, I was a white belt, and my professor said, I have like a f four months, six months of jiu-jitsu, no more than that, four or five. And he said, but I was training really good. And he said, uh, if you win, you keep the blue belt. If you lost, you go back to white. And after <laughs> that, I lost. Yeah, I was a white belt. I fought blue belt, but was a white belt for not two months, three months, something like that. And then uh, that day, I, I, I thought I quit. And then uh, when there was a purple belt that I, 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 I didn't have money to train, I had nothing. I, I thought that, that was funny. I was talking about quitting. I received a call. The guy offered me a job to teach in another city. That was a kind of, kind of miracle. That day was, uh, I was thinking, but just, yeah. but this is not about jujitsu. I still love him, but about like how, how are going to keep doing that? No. Okay. And, uh, describe your feelings when you received your black belt. 
Yeah, that that that's it, it's funny because uh you know when you have a mission uh bigger than a black belt a black belt food it was important day but it was kind of like a okay now I, i i start my journey now i it wasn't the the happiest ah and now it was a like a very important achievement but i knew the battles just was about to start wonderful wonderful okay and then this is the last one kind of a silly one uh but do you wash your belt never Ah, we knew it. <laughs> If you wash your belt, you lost the power. <laughs> One day, my mom will wash my white belt. We have a big fight. Oh, no, mom. <laughs> white, my white Who belt won? was... Who won? <laughs> uh, my, my mom always win, but I, I, I give her a hard time that day. <laughs> All right. Well, Professor was amazing talking to you what an amazing life what amazing stories i really admire you for your drive and everything i that didn't you've been doing. i didn't i didn't tell you like 30 percent of the everything well, we, that's really why we gotta do it again <laughs> we'll come back we gotta, we gotta do, it do it again we gotta do it again listen oh congratulations God. on your on your show i know you you do one in portuguese and they had a lot of success where can people find you Social media, website, anything? Where's your yeah. academy? Share you know, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like a, a, in a, a racing car, riding a bike, <laughs> because I'm not good on social media. I don't even like it. Uh, I like to 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 watch fights, that stuff. You know more the uh, uh, social media now is like a news. You know, you know the information who's fighting, who's next fight. But I'm not like really like keep you posting things about my life. It's not because I don't, I don't want to share, but I, I think you spend too much time doing that. You know, I enjoy the life for real, you know? I go to travel with my, my wife and she's when to stop to picture, picture. She's like, we're not enjoying the, 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 the trip. I know the picture is important because keep keeping the memory. Uh, but uh, it's hard for me. I'm old school. I don't know how to deal with those things. I, I do because people love, just a small group of people love me talking crazy stuff on the show. <laughs> and then and, and the most important is the, the real thing that nobody want to talk about it. I talk there. But I, we have the, uh, uh, the page on Facebook. And uh, uh, also we have a... a, a YouTube channel, and we also have the uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, mm -hmm. that stuff called Hezenha Black Belt. Hezenha is a, it's a word in Portuguese that is say like uh, when people, you know, when you finish your training and after everybody keep you talking shit after that, that's Hezenha. <laughs> that's Hezenha Black trash. Belt. Yeah, uh, nice. Trash talking? There not not tra uh, trash talking, but it's not when you're having fun with your friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like after training and you had yeah. uh, funny stories. This, uh, that's his yeah. Yeah. So okay. yeah, It's having had, fun, having fun. You've, you've, had had great, you've had some great names on there, great guests. Uh, you know, I've been following that, but uh, obviously I don't speak Portuguese, so I can enjoy it fully. But, um, but uh, right. that's, a, that's a good news for you and for everybody that like. <laughs> if you go on the, on the computer, desktop computer, Uh -huh. the, U, the YouTube offer you a subtitle. Oh, yeah. there you go. If you go, you go. If you go, right, if you go, that. if you go on the on the phone, they don't have that. But you go on the desktop, you can find a subtitle in Portuguese. So subtitles translation is available. Yeah, in it would be hard. It would be hard for the translator, but <laughs> 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 but it's good. It's good. It's good. I I I I, I read something. It's, it makes sense. A lot of sense. Good. All right. Well, thanks for being here again. Thanks for the great stories. Um, we have to do it again because there is at least half of them that we are missing. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a lot. <laughs> But thanks for being with us. And Gary? Yeah. yeah um, great great I, conversation. Fantastic. I love it. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I do, before the episodes come out, I do a little sound bite that we put up on social media. Uh, I'm going to have a lot to choose from in this episode. I think they're going to be a lot of fun. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Oh, thanks so much for having me. All right. Take, Take care. care. Peace. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Raw Radio. 
If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care. Thank you.